Or maybe a bit more like Bert and Ernie. Hey, Bert. This is Luke and Lewis on Triple M Modern Digital. It's Luke and Lewis for lunch on Triple M Modern Digital. Are you ready for lunch, everyone? Uh, yes. Yes. Have to think about it. I'm ready for lunch, mm. uh, but I uh, can't do it. I'm no, you didn't do a set the table show. properly. Mm, I'm going to leave. I don't have a bib. I'm going to make a big mess. And also, some great radio content. Mm. Because what do we have coming up in the show, Luke? <laughs> we have, uh, today we've decided to become more Triple M. I was yes. listening to some Triple M this morning, uh, actual FM Triple M, not modern digital. For once, I tuned out of modern digital True. and uh, started listening to, you know, the, our rivals. Well, we are, really. I think that we've been Partners putting, slash rivals. Well, we've been putting so much effort into being modern digital that we've almost let slip our Triple M side of things. Yes. I mean, I don't even own a tool belt. So, we're exactly right. <laughs> so, during the song, we're going to get Lewis a tool belt and we're going to become more Triple M. And also, I'm going to be teaching you uh, what there is to know about everything today from the boys' book. And I believe you have a gripe about one-ply toilet paper. Yeah, we this why why does one ply toilet paper even exist? I think it's a human rights abuse, and uh, I'm going to talk about it after this. This is Luke and Lewis for lunch. Lewis, I was uh, commuting to work this morning, listening uh, to the radio in the car, and I don't have a brand new Tesla with a digital radio, no. so I wanted to get some triple M in me. So I wanted to get some modern digital in me, but I was like, ah. ah. So I listened to it. So you're closest. riding the FM airwaves. Yeah. So I was for once tuning into. Uh, old school analog radio and listen to regular triple m yeah because that's the closest i could get to mm. modern digital and as i was listening to this i thought we were pretty triple m on our show i think so i think that we're i like to think we are anyway i think that we're quite triple m but also modern and digital yes i like to think we hold there's like a the, <laughs> in a, in a three-way venn diagram we're sitting right in the middle yeah. of those three things yeah but lewis I'm, we're not as Triple M as what? I thought we were. What do you mean? But Triple M's like rock and sports and comedy, yes. and that's me, man. I love cricket. <laughs> uh, I give Couldn't up. even that's, finish the sentence. He just went off cricket, and then his eyes went. Yeah, no, sorry for lying, lied. listeners. I don't like cricket. The no. Big Bash sucks. <laughs> you don't even. It's not even the Big Bash at the moment. It's Good. the Ashes, but you don't know the difference. Well, you the know, someone vacuumed those Ashes up. The other day, he called it the Big Bashes because he didn't. <laughs> So that shows you how much. Triple M. But I thought, you know what? Other than Lewis, Lewis's constant distaste for cricket, I thought we're pretty Triple M. Lewis it came to my attention that we're not as Triple M as we thought. What do you mean? Because I heard this ad this morning on Triple M. At Total Tools, we don't just guarantee you'll get the best price. We f- swear by it. What? <laughs> their ads swear? They're swearing on their ads. That's so Triple M. Yeah. Dude, we don't swear at all. Well, no. I swore once, but I got in trouble for yeah. it. And that meanwhile, you're on, on Triple schoolies. M. They're, they're swearing Mate. in their ads. Yeah. They're paying money so they can swear on Triple M. Yeah. I just thought, man, what what's our show become? We're way too modern. We're way too digital. I know. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's happened to our show, man, but I just We've let like it slide. We've just been focusing on modern things. Like, I've been getting into Bitcoin, which is modern and yep. digital, but I haven't been getting into ACDC, which yeah. is Triple M. We failed our listeners. Yeah, so I thought, you know what? Let's change this today. Yeah. And uh, before the show, we've made a new Luke and Lewis promo for Triple M Modern Digital yeah. just to get the Triple M back in our show, We Lewis. need to even up the balance, yeah. and I think that with this ad, we've really struck it. So let's take a listen. Welcome to Luke and f***ing Lewis on Triple M Modern Digital. People think that just because we're modern and f***ing digital that we aren't very Triple M. That's Bullshit, mate. And if anyone says otherwise, we'll shove your f***ing head up your own f- so hard that I'll f- stomp you on the street, you dirty dog. And then if you're still running your mouth, I'll get Mick Malloy to kick a footy up your ass so f***ing hard, he'll f- And you know how much Mick likes to do that, so there you go. At Luke and Lewis, we don't just say you'll get a Triple M experience, we f- swear by it. <laughs> This is Luke and Lewis on Triple M Modern Digital. Luke, yesterday we did a recurring segment called Luke Tries New Things, where I get you to try new things, um, surprisingly enough. And uh, the first time we did it, we got you to try a new Subway sandwich. Yes. Um, But now, it's time to get into it. Hey, hey, Luke, Luke, time to try a new thing. No way, no way, I don't want to do that. Luke tries new things. Oh, I think I need to try. No, wait, wait, wait. 
<laughs> was that you forgetting that we had an opener then going, oh, just stop, stop, stop a sentence halfway and throw to the opener? Mate, sometimes you've got to try new things. I mean, I'm sick of throwing the intros properly. Sometimes you want to do it a little bit new by, you know, maybe tricking the listener into yeah. thinking that we don't have an opener. Yeah. No, I just did forget it. <laughs> but it's not about me. The segment is about you, yeah. mate. You're always constantly trying to get me to try new things. And yesterday, you tried to get me to read a book because the what last... You mean tried? I mean, obviously, you read the book. Sorry. Yeah. No, oh, I tried to read it. I only have yeah. to read one chapter. That's what okay. we agreed on. Yeah. Which you did. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> So, you wanted me to read one chapter of the famous book, Moby Dick, because the last um, book I read was Specky McGee yes. in about grade six. Not a not a literary classic. Um, not as uh, well known as Moby Dick is. I think is. Gary Lyon and Phyllis Arena would disagree, because <laughs> they, they were the authors, and okay. I think their mums would disagree. Right. So, you're taking footy players mm-hmm. who got paid to write a book. One was an author, one was a footy player, but it's good mm-hmm. to see your Triple M knowledge once again coming into play in full force on well, this show. Like I could swear. <laughs> um, but yes, you said read Moby Dick, and I'm assuming you've read it, yeah? Yeah, I've read that would be pretty book. hypocritical yeah, of I've you. I've read more than the, more than the first chapter. I quite love the first chapter. Okay, tell yeah. me tell me a little bit about the first chapter. Would you like? Okay, I'll tell you one thing I liked about the first chapter, and one thing I didn't like. Okay. okay? One thing I really loved about Moby Dick was uh-huh. that uh, I liked that Ishmael went to sea because he was feeling, and I quote. A damp, drizzly November in his soul. That's mm-hmm. one thing I quite enjoyed about Chapter 1. Yes. And one thing I didn't love yeah. about Moby Dick Chapter 1 was there was no reference to the American music producer Moby or to his penis. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, quick question about the first chapter. Um, where, does, where does Ishmael meet the, uh, the first spearman? On the boat. Right. That's wrong. Is it? Yeah, he meets him in a bar oh. before he gets on the ship. Must have... Uh, you must just missed that bit. Must right. have missed that bit. Mm, okay. Uh, do you have anything else about the first chapter you'd like to tell me? Um, oh, well, obviously everyone loves the uh, infamous first line, which is, call me Ishmael, because he's the narrator of Moby Dick. He is, uh, the story is about him. So you've at least read the first three words. Yes. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I did. I read the whole chapter. I okay, that. right. Um, could you tell me what role did Starbuck play on the ship? Was he the captain or the first mate or? Um, Starbuck uh, has a healthy respect of the power of whales. Right. Could you please show me what's on your computer? But what role did he play on the ship, Lewis? Yeah. Well, if you give me a... (laughs) Oh, was he a lieutenant? No, he was the first mate. I've looked up the wrong thing. (laughs) Wait, Starbuck? Yeah, Starbuck. Lieutenant Starbuck. Yeah, well, I suppose you could say he's a lieutenant as he well. Is. It's, I'm looking at the Wikipedia article right now. All right, well, then, mate, I'm going off memory, or you're just going off Wikipedia. No, uh, I'm going off from what I read last night. Okay, so describe the peacod. Cod. Yeah, the peacod. What's the peacod in Moby Dick? Um, is that where Ishmael and the boys hang out? It seems like a hangout space. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Is it? Yeah. It's, uh, would you like to make a more... Lock it in, clear, Eddie. More, lock one in. The place where they hang out. Yeah, lock well, it, it in. It's the ship that oh. they're on the whole time. Right. Would you classify that as a hangout space? Yeah, they were hanging out there for months on yeah. end. Mm, they okay. couldn't go anywhere else. Why were they on the ship? Ah, uh, they were whaling. Yeah. Because mm. Moby Dick is a whale. That's good. So he understands the general plot. Yeah, I saw the film like <laughs> eight years ago, and that's okay. all I really remember. Uh, and obviously from reading chapter one. Last question mm-hmm. about Moby Dick. What does the second mate, Stubb, always have in his mouth? <laughs> Hopefully not in movies. <laughs> um. <laughs> it's always in his mouth. When you see Stubb, you go, oh, he's got it in his mouth. A uh, classic Stubby. Cookie. No. Ooh, what would they eat on a boat? A lemons. No, he's not eating it's it. It's just in his mouth. You can't eat it. Oh, is he chewing something all the time? No. Oh, does he have wooden teeth? No, it's more of a leisure activity. <laughs> <laughs> just tell me, Lewis. <laughs> I think Mike's going to dump We're this. We're getting into the danger zone. It's just a pipe. A pipe? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which you would know if you read the book. You didn't read it, mate. What did th- I tried to read it. This is Luke tries new things. Yeah. I read Call Me Ishmael and I just got so bored. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to do something better with my time. But can we admit that I tried? You, mm, okay, you tried. I'll give it to you then. But uh, next time, we're going to try something a little bit easier than okay. reading the language you speak. Yeah, <laughs> it was just, I don't know. Give me a speck of a gay book and I'll probably read it, but. Hey, at least we all found out what Stubb keeps in his mouth. Yes, just a pipe. <laughs> Luke and Lewis for lunch. Luke and Lewis for lunch on Triple M Modern Digital. Luke, I read a study that says um, people going to work, it makes them put on weight because it's really stressful. And just going to work and sitting in an office every day makes you fat. Yes, yeah, people saying that the high stress levels and long hours, uh, the study came out, that yeah, showing a, a direct link to weight gain, which is not very surprising. And um, this is my first job I've ever had. Yeah. And not that it's taken its toll. I mean, I think the first month of this show, we were doing an eating challenge where I eat yeah. donuts every day. I don't think that's a regular workplace environment. So at, at the start of the show, I was going, man, this full-time job life, it's hard, man. You got to eat Krispy Kremes on the daily. <laughs> and then I realized very quickly that that's not every job. That's no, just, we, we, we made that, that part be, of our job. Yeah, we, no one told us to. We just thought that would be funny. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. So, but even since then, yeah. uh, the long hours and stuff of this grind of a lifestyle, talking to each other from 12 to two every day, not as taken its toll. I don't think I've gained weight, but I'm definitely unhealthier than I was. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't know. I don't. I I think I'm here a lot, and I work really hard, and I'm I'm trying to put on weight. I go. I've been going to the gym every day and eating more food than I normally do, and I haven't put on any weight. So I think this study's wrong because I work really hard here, and I'm just Wait, not seeing results. Have you lost weight since you've been here? Well, I've just stayed stagnant. I'm just uh, I'm just at neutral. Well, you're not working hard enough. No, I'm going to gym and I'm eating food. I am working. Well, would you like me to try? Oh, you and mean working you out? here? What do, you, what do you mean? Working here, not hard enough here. Like, I'm working in the gym. But yeah, you're but you're not working hard enough here because I'm sitting here grinding, putting yeah. on the KG, stacking them on, What's the most stressful away. thing you did this week? Um, uh... <laughs> you had to pretend that you read Moby Dick. Yeah, that was so annoying. I had to look at the Wikipedia article. Actually, you know what? Thanks to all the listeners, they helped me. Uh, they they linked me a site called Spark Notes. Oh well, that wasn't even you, stressful. Hey, you cheat in year twelve. I do remember that site. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah. But well, thanks to our listeners, my job isn't too stressful. Yeah. But um, the most stressful thing I've probably done all week is um, uh, do this show. Yeah. I'm right currently stressed out to the max right now. Can you, you see me? very relaxed. You're pretty zen. I'm just putting on the killers. You can probably see it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe right. that's the key for me putting on weight. I need to be more stressed every time I come into work. I mean, it'll definitely affect the show negatively, but I'm, I'm happy to do right. that if it'll well, get me Well, would you like pack. me to increase your work hours and make your work a bit harder then? Uh, no, but I assume you're going to do it anyway. Well, I'm assuming you, well, you said you want to put on weight. I'm just trying to help you out. Well, okay. Yeah. If it'll help me put on weight, stress me right. out. Go. Okay. I'll just leave. What are you, the, stu- the studio? <laughs> huh? Yeah, well, that stress you out if you have to do a radio show by yourself. <laughs> yeah, but it, I think it would also stress out our bosses. I don't, I don't think they'd oh, be on board. fine. As long as you're putting on weight, I'll just I'll justify it like that. Right, you're making Dave fat, our boss. Huh? <laughs> you're stressing him out. You're yeah, but I'm also, out. you're making you a bit you know, right. bigger as well. All yeah, right. okay. Well, yeah, I'm feeling very, Luke's gone. <laughs> I'm now here by myself. Uh, radio Mike, our button push of the show. Jeez, you've gotten fat in the last 30 seconds. Yeah, and I've had this before. You guys have both walked out on me before. Yeah. Like, a few weeks ago. And I that thought, was really yeah, hard and you, stressful you just, too. Well, you just rocked up to work the next day with man boobs. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's not a good look for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, oh, well, Luke's back. back. Oh, my God. Uh, you big blubbernaut. What happened? I left for like <laughs> I left for yeah. about 10 seconds. Dude, I'm obese. Oh, my God. Oh, that was so stressful. I'm going to cart him out of here on a wheelchair. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> Lewis. Okay, I probably overdid it. Maybe I should stay for the rest of the show just so you can de-stress and uh. Yeah, maybe yeah. play some calming music so I can shed some of these kilos yeah. I put on <laughs> while I was stressing out. <laughs> uh, Lewis, it's time for this. Proudly presenting the boys' book: How to Be the Best at Everything. Yeah, the boys. Woo! Yes. I like this segment. I, I like learning everything. Well, because, yes, this segment is where I have a book called The Boys' Book, How to Be the Best at Everything that I found while cleaning out uh, my just bookshelf. And yep. I thought, wow, not often do you find a book uh, that holds all the keys and knowledge to life. Everything. Yeah. 
all 128 pages of it. Yeah. All human knowledge in 128 pages. It's Quite miraculous. the internet, very compact. And then each like week it. we just work our way through. You've learned a lot of great stuff. You've learned how to write I've a short I've learned at least poem. six things. Yeah. That's a, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of things. Well, today, let's bring that bad boy up to seven. Let's increase Ooh, your knowledge. I like knowing seven things, man. <laughs> <laughs> today, I'm going to be teaching you how to keep people in suspense. Okay. That's not a skill that I thought I would ever need, but uh, if it's in the boys' book, well, I there. do need to. So uh, tell me how to keep people in suspense, Luke. Well, Lewis, I could tell you. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. I could keep you in suspense. Oh, he's See, read the chapter. I've read the book. <laughs> he's read it. I'm the master, my Dude, friend. <laughs> okay. I'm in suspense and I really want to know. Ready? Yeah. Go. Oh, he's good. Don't he's give, you're just showing off. Well, now. yeah, the first one is don't give away too much early. So, oh, okay, it was pretty early. I kind of just mucked up then by telling you. That. Oh, okay, yeah, you just told me a rule. Well, okay, now I know the first rule. Yeah. Can I uh, let you in on a little rules. secret? Yeah. Don't have a secret. How am I doing? Well, not great because you've got to actually have a story to tell. Oh, okay, okay. We'll finish reading it and yeah. then I'll because I'm just I'm just jumping in with a little well, bit of knowledge. number two is yeah. Well, Lewis, here's the thing with number two. Yeah. Number two is... I've been so much suspense. Never rush. Ah. Take your time. Well, I just take my time, man. I'm just... Never I'm just rush gonna, your story. If you're never, trying to keep building suspense, I've slow never down. Rushed, never rushed a story in my life, man. Yeah. I never will. Thanks. Take to, five in the middle of the story. I'll take ten. That actually leads us to number three, <laughs> which is you can break off your story occasionally. And it says a uh, way you could do this is by using the excuse of a school bell. So you could be like, oh, look, save you're at recess, right? I'm not. Um, do, do I have to be in a school? This book is it's targeted book. It's at not the men's young book. school boys. Okay, well, Still I'll go, you know, no, it's fine. I'll just go to a primary school. Okay. And if they ask me why I'm there, I'll be like, look, it's a long story. But I'm just trying to I'm keep... I'm going to tell you. <laughs> but, um, oh, is that school bell? <laughs> Ding! And then you oh, can go, oh, no, look, that was the police. It actually says, oh, look, there goes the bell. I'll tell you later. Okay. Yeah, and then you get arrested. That is a good... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. uh, and the last and final point of how to keep your suspense, Lewis, is uh, mm. always leave the best part to the end. Right. That's a pretty obvious one. So mm. let's recap it. Don't give too much but away that early. was the best part hmm. in the book. Yeah. They should have just left, left that bit out. Well, I left it to the end. Yeah. yeah don't leave it out. Oh. Just say it last. I'll last say it last. Yeah. Okay. So, Mr. just Perfect to recap, because I'm going to get you to tell a story in a sec, yep. but why keep me in suspense? Okay. Don't give too much away early. Never mm-hmm. rush. You can break off your story by using a school bell and uh, leave the best part to the end. Oh, easy. Okay. So, I believe story. you have a story to I have tell a story. me. Uh, I bought a 3DS the other day. Mm. Um, took mm. it home. That's a lot of information early. <laughs> Okay. Probably too much. <laughs> I bought a 3DS on a day. Could Ooh. be... Don't know what day it is. Okay. Um, I'm interested. <laughs> and there was a very key detail about the 3DS, yeah. which I will tell you uh-huh. later. <laughs> Jeez, I love the way... I love his pacing. Not yeah. rushed at all. No. Um, and I got home and uh, opened up the box, and inside the box was... Uh... Oh, is that the bell? <laughs> Sorry, mate. I just got to go. The school bell. I uh, couldn't, couldn't tell you what's in the box. Um, oh, too bad. Yeah, sorry, man. But, um... All right, well, fast forward now so recess is over. Yeah. Because I really want to know now. Okay, well, you're lucky, man. I'm in I've, so much suspense. I've actually saved the best bit for last. <laughs> you, you didn't. <laughs> uh, I did. This is the best bit. You don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. Could be anything. And it is the best bit. Yep. Would you like to know it? Yes. I'm sure you would. But don't rush. I'm about to tell you. The last bit. <laughs> Here it comes. I found out that it didn't come with... Is that, is that the bell again? What? I don't know if I can tell you. What didn't your 3DS come with, Lewis? I'm in so much suspense. Ah, oh, charger. Didn't come with a charger. Didn't. Had to go and buy one. Really annoying. Yeah. That was <laughs> the best bit of the story. This is uh, Luke and... Well, you'll never know for lunch. <laughs> Luke, have you uh, joined the revolution? Uh, yes. Back in Russia... In the uh, look, I'm just trying to recite my history knowledge, and uh, that's why I failed it in high school. No, I'm not talking about the Russian Revolution. Oh, uh, you're I'm doing talking... more specific. I'm, I'm joining so many revolutions these days; it's yeah. hard to keep up. You are quite revolting. Um, that was great. Uh, underappreciated, boys. I'm not uh, going to sound the joke alarm, but I just want to let you know that you're you're on caution. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was talking about the uh, the currency revolution, the the evolution of money, Bitcoin, the cryptocurrency revolution. Yeah. No. 
Why not? I just haven't got it, gotten about it yet, man. It's it requires a lot of research to feel like to get into, and I don't have. Well, I don't have that kind of time. I don't have that kind of effort. You know what? Seeing most of the people posting about it online, it's very clear. It's you don't really even do any off. research at all. <laughs> well, I, I do see people posting about it, and like they what invest like two cents, and they're an, they're an entrepreneur. But yeah. like, yeah, that puts me off in a way because I just think, oh, those people are gonna lose their two cents because I don't have no idea what they're doing. Well, yeah, one Bitcoin at the moment I, is worth $25,000. Well, see, I hear all these stats, right, because it gets bandied about a lot, and I just think you don't. You only hear about the success stories. You don't hear yeah. about a guy who put his life savings and his mortgage and stuff into mm. some other cryptocurrency that failed and he's lost everything. You well, it's happened hear- to Bitcoin a few times because the price goes up and down, mm. and it has crashed really badly like six times that it's been around. And some that has happened to some people. But yeah, you don't hear about them. No. Because, you only uh, hear like, this guy made a million dollars from Bitcoin or whatever. Yeah, like I'm reading this article, uh, Melbourne man made $15 million with his Bitcoin gamble. <laughs> Uh, and he, he's, his name's Sam. He calls himself a serial uh, entrepreneur and a hustler. So it's just <laughs> every guy involved in Bitcoin. Anyone ever. who calls himself a hustler is not a hustler. It's no. like spend less time thinking of cool nicknames for yourself and more time hustling, you dork. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I need a break to you. I'm a bit of a hustler, man. I've jumped on the <laughs> cryptocurrency chain, and uh, I'm leaving you behind. You he was lying. There was no article, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, no, there is There is an article. It's just not about me. This uh, this guy is actually, he's gotten onto Bitcoin, and he's starting up 2,600 Bitcoin ATMs, and he's also creating his own coin called OzCoin, which uh, just, I don't know anything about this coin. I don't know if it's a good idea or a bad idea, but just off the name, absolutely not investing in anything called Oz. No. And Oz anything, not no, investing. instead of an ATM, there's just like a kangaroo. Yeah. It sits there and you're going to press its pouch. That's like the iSnack 2.0. I don't think that's 2. how Bitcoin <laughs> works. <laughs> there's no ATMs. It's like the it's iSnack 2.0 of yeah. cryptocurrency. It's just the yeah, worst stop name. stop trying. Yeah, it's the don't. worst name. It is. <laughs> um, yeah, how much of a Bitcoin do you own, you little entrepreneur? Uh, I got in when they were worth five thousand. Um, and yeah, uh, well, how much of it do you own? Well, I don't know. One, I own point three nine of a bitcoin. You don't even you don't even own a whole bitcoin. Point three nine is pretty good. That's almost fifty percent of a bitcoin. It's, and you know what, not man? Fifty percent. I could buy a burger with point zero zero one five six bitcoin if I want. And you know, you sitting here judging me for mm. owning the future of currency. Well, you know what, man? When you go to the supermarket and you try and get yourself a chalky, mm. and they and you're like, oh, is that two bucks? And they're like, sorry, we only take bitcoin. You're going to starve to death. You're like, mate, I should have listened to Lewis. I'll be on my private jet with my 0.39 of a Bitcoin. Mm. 0.38. I had to buy the jet. Unlikely scenario. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, never going to happen. But um, yeah, you're nothing like this guy. So no, stop not. comparing yourself to him. No, this guy um, owns a Suvlaki shop yeah. and he put his <laughs> he put his Bitcoin. You know what? I'm actually it. hustling over here with my cash, with my normal credit card payments. I'm actually hustling working nine to five. Mm. That's hustling. Yeah. I yeah. mean, ha- I, I would say anyone who's sitting on money investing in a cryptocurrency is just sitting there playing Xbox. That's the definition of not hustling. Oh yeah, I think you're actually hustling if you're like buying and selling when the price goes up yeah. and down. I I I looked at that and I considered doing that and immediately I was like, oh, there's no way I'm smart enough to do that. So I just bought some and I hold it and cross my fingers and hope the price goes up and then I can sell it before it crashes. Yeah. So, you know, future of currency, but only until I sell it. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> He's not our entrepreneur, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Luke and Lewis for lunch. Luke, did you notice when David Kosh, Koshy, you know, one of the icons of uh, Australian media... Yeah, uh, especially host, host Australian, Sunrise. Yeah, Australian morning television icon. Yeah, almost as good as Carl Stefano. Almost. <laughs> almost. Well, not almost. Pretty pretty wide gap. But <laughs> did you know... It's a big pump up to Carl. Yeah. Well, you know... Uh, or you know, a massive non-pump up to Koshy. I can't work out which one. Yeah, which if you're not you're as good as Carl Stefanovic, is that an insult mm. or something to be proud of? Mm. I don't know. A bit of both. <laughs> Let us know, listeners. <laughs> um, David Koshy, did you know that he's like a multi-millionaire? I knew he was president of the Port Adelaide Football Club, so I'm guessing he has a bit of money. The other day on TV, he wore like a $16,000 jacket or something for a yeah. publicity stunt. So it's the ugliest jacket I've ever seen. Well, yeah, I gathered that he was had some money behind him. Wait, does being president of a football club make you money? Correct. It is a business. It's but it's not. Oh, so did he like owns the team, or is he just he's, working there? As he's president, he's the he's the owner of Port Adelaide Football Club. Okay. 
So he he like it's like me owning point three nine of a bitcoin. Yeah, but he, he owns point three nine of Port Adelaide. No, he owns all of Port Adelaide. It's Dude. like if you owned one bitcoin, and that bitcoin was worth a lot more than just five thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's amazing. But yeah, I was googling this and actually searched... you're just comparing yourself with David Koch, <laughs> man. I, it's <laughs> on a that, business level, it's either I compare myself to David Koch or I compare myself to Carl Stefanovic, yeah. and I don't know which one I want to be closer Carl's to. Carl's not that business savvy. Mm, so true. Well, you know what? I should Google Carl net worth, because I looked up David Koch's net worth, uh, and I found a a David Koch without the E, 49 billion, Mm. um, but then I added the E, and the value dropped down to just 4 million. Um, So I was thinking, we need to learn how David Koch makes all his money, and I found out that he actually writes a financial column with news.com.au. Oh, that's how we learn how. Yeah, so I think that, yeah, we could learn a lot from Koch's column and how to make money. Oh, I really need to make some money. Who's going to help me? Koshy, 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 Koshy's Columns. Making money with David Kosh. So, this and, segment... Sorry, before we begin, does he have a column about learning how to sing in tune? Uh, I could give it a read sometimes. <laughs> uh, no, he doesn't, but he has a financial column, and there is like 50 different columns that David Kosh has written, uh, and in every column, he just pretends to be a normal person. Let's it's do so it. cute. Let's make some money. Yeah, all right. So, first, first lesson we're going to learn, Luke, uh, this is how you're going to learn to fight for cheaper f- fight f- fight uh, fruit and vegetable prices. I'm going to fight fruit and vegetable. I'll punch a mango price any day. <laughs> Go, let's do it. Yeah, so uh, these, are, these are seven tips of how to, to mm. get cheaper fruit and vegetables. It's Tip first, number one, yeah. uh, it's a little bit obscure. I don't know if you've thought of this before. Um, look for low prices. Yeah, so just find like what? Strawberries, two ninety nine a kilo and roundhouse kick it in the head. Yeah, yeah, but you just look for, you just look for low prices. That's it. Oh, right, was that the tip? Yeah, that oh. was the tip. Thanks, gosh. <laughs> Thanks, David. Gosh. Uh, number two, change your habits. So if you like uh, things that are more expensive, why don't you just start liking something else? That's literally the crux of that paragraph. Change your fruit habits. So just, do you like, um, what's an expensive thing? Do you like bananas? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Well, why don't you just start liking uh, uh-huh. pomegranates? <sighs> no. Oh. Not following David Koch's tips, are you? Well, David, bananas weren't a great example. I don't think they're that expensive. Pomegranates actually sound like a luxury fruit because mm, I don't eat them. Any any food that is like more exotic for my very small minded cuisine, yeah. I consider like it must be expensive, even though it's probably not. I, just I couldn't even like think it. of a cheap veggie. What's a cheap veggie? I don't know. I'd, carrots, mm, carrot, pretty cheap. Potato, yeah. Potato's okay, potato. like the ultimate. Well, cheap. That's, a, that's a good one. Stop liking bananas mm. and just switch it to potato. Easy, yeah. save some money. Mm. Saved at least thirty cents there. Thanks, Josh. Um, <laughs> uh, another way is to start a co-op. So uh, that? What, it, what that is, is uh, obviously you get cheaper prices if you buy in bulk. Oh. So you round up your whole street and you all go to the supermarket once to right. buy 100 bananas and you go, hey, we want 20 cents off each nana. I played a co-op mission on Battlefront last night with my brother. Mm, did you save any money? No. Nah. Mm. <laughs> uh, and then uh, number five, last tip. Oh, there's only five tips. I thought it was seven. Uh, slack, Kosh. <laughs> uh, grow your own So just Why don't you just grow bananas In your backyard Well that is the ultimate cheap way But then you still have to buy the seeds That's true I bet you he doesn't grow his own He doesn't do any of this No I don't think he's he even got wrote a this 16, article No He's got 16,000 <laughs> He probably pays someone To write Koshy's columns Most people Don't really have a backyard Big enough to Ooh. host a banana farm David Kosh <laughs> I don't think uh, David Kosh wrote col- I don't Well think- actually Just looking at this Um the author is David and Libby Kosh. No. Nah. So I reckon Libby has done most of the writing and David Kosh put his name on. He's like, oh, I did that too. I reckon he got the cash counter, right? <laughs> <laughs> Luke and Lewis for lunch. That's the end of the show, guys. We will be back tomorrow. This is our final week of radio for the year. We've been cancelled. No, just kidding. We haven't been cancelled. I just we, left you in suspense there. Yeah, thank you. Oh, <laughs> We will be back next year. We are going to tell you specific dates later in the week. So you're keeping you in suspense as yeah. well. Oh, is that the school bell? Oh. <laughs> Ooh, Mike's on his toes today. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. Sorry, i got to go, guys. I was going to tell you something very important, but, you know, school's out. i got to go hang out with the kids. See you later.